Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I'd like to start off with introducing our organization, Fezana, a faith-based NGO representing a diverse and growing Zarathustra community in North America. Zoroastrianism is one of the world's oldest monotheistic religions. It was founded by the prophet Zarathustra in ancient Iran approximately 3,500 years ago. Fezana has collaborated with a number of NGOs based in Pakistan and the UK for this presentation. But before I go on, I want to say a quick thank you to Fezana. We were meant to do this presentation at the UN Commission on the Status of Women Conference in New York this March, but due to the coronavirus outbreak, the conference was canceled. And so we are very grateful to Fezana for offering us a platform to share the transformative work done by the NGOs we represent on this panel. Pakistan-based NGO Ahang works towards advocating women's sexual and reproductive health and reducing violence against women. You will hear about the Pakistan Business Council on how they're promoting gender diversity in the workforce. And I will speak about UK-based Asha Center on how they worked with underprivileged girls from India on building their self-confidence. The title of our session is Empowering Women Through Health, Education and Enhancement in the Workplace, covering five of the sustainable development goals, including no poverty, health and well-being, gender equality, decent work and economic growth, and reducing inequalities. Today, I'm joined by the lovely ladies, Miral Malavala and Shireen Mary. Miral is a graduate student at McGill University pursuing a master's degree in public health. Born and raised in Pakistan, Miral has worked with organizations including the Aga Khan University, WHO Sri Lanka, and Palladium in the areas of maternal and child health and sexual and reproductive health. She recently completed her graduate placement at the Pan-American Health Organization in Washington, D.C., where she worked in the Department of Public Health Emergencies. Miral, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction, Sanaya. Good evening, everyone. I'm representing Ahank, a Pakistan-based NGO established in 1995 that works on improving the reproductive health of men, women, and young people. Through capacity building and advocacy, Ahung focuses on the creation of an enabling environment where young girls have access to reproductive health education, are practicing healthy behaviors, and are able to exercise their rights. The low education status of girls is one of Pakistan's most pressing challenges. The country ranks 150 out of 164 on the Gender Inequality Index, reflecting gender-based inequalities in reproductive health, empowerment, and economic activity. Young girls desperately need sexual and reproductive health information and yet lack avenues for obtaining reliable information. Consequence, consequently, adolescents are left in the dark while going through a host of physical, emotional, and social changes. In response to these problems, Ahang developed a life skills-based education program for school-going adolescent girls and boys. LSBE refers to an interactive teaching methodology that imparts factual information about health and the body to adolescents while equipping them with skills to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of everyday life. Ahang develops the capacity of teachers to integrate quality LSBE into the school curriculum. Teachers are equipped with accurate knowledge and participatory teaching tools to be able to engage with students and discuss adolescent issues as well as more challenging topics such as child sexual abuse. The LSBE program is holistic as it looks at knowledge-based education and combines it with the promotion of healthy attitudes. The content focuses on gender equality, nutrition, body protection, and builds, more, and builds core life skills, including decision-making and communication skills. More complex topics such as early marriage, family welfare, 
substance abuse, STIs, and stigma are addressed at a later stage with older students. In addition to the workbooks, students are given the opportunity to apply what they have learned through extracurricular activities, such as art competitions, dramas, and debates based on LSBE topics. To date, Ahang has empowered over 200,000 adolescents in more than 200 secondary schools across Pakistan. LSBE has resulted in increased knowledge of sexual and reproductive health and rights, such as bodily rights, changes during puberty, importance of birth spacing, and choice and partner. Increased confidence and communication skills among girls and ability to negotiate with parents regarding age of marriage, contributing to a decrease in secondary school dropouts. Girls were made aware of their rights to higher education and were able to identify its importance in the development of society. Many girls voiced their career aspirations and exhibited knowledge of the different professions they can pursue, as seen in the picture here. A participant of the program said, in my family, girls do not pursue professional education. After the LSB curriculum, I have become aware that education is my right and nobody can force me to leave it. If my brother can go to university, why can't I? I want to complete my education and I will do it. Participants were able to recognize gender inequalities practiced on a daily basis, such as the unequal distribution of food among boys and girls, while boys were also educated on women's autonomy and breaking masculinity stereotypes. A female LSB participant is quoted to have said, women and partners in their homes, communities and societies, no one should be considered less than another. The program promoted sensitivity among pupils about sexual abuse and harassment. Girls were also able to identify practices such as verbal and emotional abuse and touching someone without their consent as sexual violence. In an ever globalizing world, it is important for NGOs to work together to solve problems faced by young women everywhere. Having said that, integrating LSB in societies afflicted by gender inequities is a promising approach. And here are some strategies implemented by AHANG, which may be adopted by all interested NGOs in their respective countries. So the program followed a thorough mapping of the context and existing vulnerabilities in consultation with influential community members, such as religious scholars, subject experts, and parents. The result was a curriculum that followed WHO guidelines, but adapted to the local context. As gaining political commitment is a priority, Ahung identified key decision makers and advocates for LSB with the, within the government. Engaging champions who influenced decision makers proved very useful in shaping policies in favor of the program. Ahang built partnerships with organizations that work on gender equity, girls education, and adolescent health at the local, national, and international levels to facilitate the scale up, replication, and sustainability of the program. As integration of LSBE into the school curriculum is essential, Teachers' aptitude and willingness to teach LSB topics should be assessed before the selection to ensure program quality. Parents should be sensitized and counseled by the school in order to avoid resistance. Involving parents in students' learning had a very positive impact on the program's success. Lastly, ongoing monitoring and evaluation activities with, with students and teachers is crucial to ensure course content and strategies continuously revised based on the findings. The LSB program is very sustainable. Integrating this program into the school curriculum and training teachers not only results in school taking independent ownership of the program, but also contributes to financial sustainability. Running this program costs approximately $2 per student per year. That's less than the price of one Starbucks coffee. Conclusively, Ahung envisions a future where the rights of adolescents are respected, protected, and fulfilled, where all young people have access to resources and are able to make informed decisions related to their sexual and reproductive health. Thank you for listening, and I'm very happy to answer any questions via online communication. Once again, my name is Maral Mavalvala, and you can reach me at maral.mbl at gmail.com or at 
438-822-0377. Thank you. Thanks, Miral. That was really, really interesting to learn about the amazing work that Ahang is doing um, in Pakistan. All right, so next I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Sanaya Master. I am a comm specialist originally from New Zealand, now living in Vancouver, Canada. I organized the first World Zoroastrian Youth Leaders Forum at the Asha Center in March 2018. I've been a speaker at global and, and local Zoroastrian events, including the 7th World Zoroastrian Youth Congress in LA and the Jamshid Gay Pavli Seminar in Vancouver, Canada. I guest edited the Fezana Journal twice. And in August 2019, I was lucky to attend the 68th UN Civil Society Conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, and compile the Rapiches Report on behalf of Fezana. So today I'm going to be talking about a project that is very close to my heart, the Peace Ambassadors Program at the Asha Center. So let me start off by telling you a little bit about the Asha Center. It is a British educational charity working for the empowerment of young people worldwide. They provide transformative non-formal educational courses in the fields of ethical leadership, social inclusion, intercultural and interfaith understanding, sustainable development, and performing arts. As you can see in these pictures, the Asha Center is known for being stunningly beautiful. The Asha landscape is actually inspired by the ancient gardens of Persia. The Persians believed that by cultivating the land, they were also cultivating and beautifying their inner lives. This sacred space is the perfect environment for self-reflection, observing inspiration, fostering strong bonds, and discovering a deeper sense of purpose. I was a volunteer at the Yasha Center in the year 2017, which is how I was able to get involved with this project. So how did this project originate? Well, in 2004, human rights campaigner, the founder of the Yasha Center, and a personal mentor, Zerbanu Gifford, was awarded a Nesta Fellowship for which she interviewed 300 women from 60 countries whose inspirational lives had changed our world. One of the inspirational women she interviewed was Leela Punawala, a highly accomplished professional based in Pune, India, who set up the Leela Punawala Foundation offering scholarships for secondary and further education to girls from disadvantaged backgrounds in India. Urbana suggested that she could host the Leela Fellows at the Asha Center and so started the partnership resulting in the Peace Ambassadors Program, which has since seen 166 young postgrad women from India come to the Asha Center. In the early years, the Asha Center hosted the girls freely. More recently, Samina Capital, an investment firm, sponsors this project as part of their corporate social responsibility. So the purpose of the Peace Ambassadors Program is chiefly to provide young Indian women from disadvantaged backgrounds with the opportunity for personal and cultural expansion. In India, there is a heavy emphasis on academic studies, which leaves little to no time for their self-development. These girls are usually in great need for some facilitated personal reflection exercises and respond so well to activities that engage their whole being. So there are four pillars to the Yasha's non-formal educational approach. Learning through head, heart and hands, harnessing the power of nature, fostering a global community, and nurturing creativity and innovation through the art. All these elements are incorporated into the Peace Ambassadors Program. The Leela Fellows participate in activities that teach them about the different aspects of the human condition. For example, they have an activity where they learn about different personality types. Through another activity, they learn about meeting life's challenges through the wisdom of the Mahabharata. Another activity encourages them to learn about empathy and fostering positive relationships. 
They also get to connect with nature by learning about biodynamic gardening and working in the gardens. They get to explore their creativity by putting together a production at the local theater that showcases their journey of growth at Asha. They also go on lots of field trips and visit communities that they would have never been exposed to before. So I actually spoke to one of the trainers, Adrian Locker, about his experience with the Leela Fellows. And he says it is a special joy to be a trainer of this program. Rarely does he experience such thirst and enthusiastic absorption of all aspects of the training. But the guest speakers, the trips to places such as Bath and Oxford and the seaside in Wales, the walks in nature and the cult cultural activities. So why is Asha the perfect venue for this initiative? Well, here, they were able to connect more deeply with the healing powers of nature, each other, and their higher selves. They also get to meet and interact socially with young people from other countries who's volunteering at the kitchens, at the center's kitchens and gardens. This is personally and culturally a very important experience for these young women who have led fairly sheltered lives within their communities. In my personal experience, what I observed is that when they arrive, they are so shy and lacking in self-confidence. And during the course of the program, you see them blossom. They are highly engaged throughout the process and enjoy every second of it. They leave with a much stronger sense of self-worth, their feminine power, and life's purpose. The impact of this program is dramatic. The young women use their newfound confidence and learning to transform themselves and initiate community projects in India. Examples of such projects are teaching health and hygiene in villages, hosting leadership workshops for young girls in lower Dasar schools, cleaning up slums, tree plantations, caring for the elderly and the disabled, the list goes on. Such investments also impact their social communities, who often do not value the importance of girls' education. It is shown that the whole community changes their attitude towards women when they see their girls return from the Asha experience and voluntarily take up challenging leadership roles. So as you can see on the slide, here are some stats of where the Leela Fellows who have completed the program are now. As you can see, they're doing great things in the world. The Asha experience has lived on and continues to be a source of strength and inspiration in their lives and work. Thank you all for listening to me today. My name again is Sanaya Master, and you can contact me for more information at sanaya.master at extra xtra .nz. My mobile number is plus one seven seven eight eight one four five seven three seven. Thank you all. Next up, we have Shireen Mary. So Shireen's passion for an equitable educational and social landscape continues to be evident in a professional and volunteering work. After successfully completing projects in education, in UAE, Tanzania, Azerbaijan, and the US, Shireen is leading a project on family-friendly workplaces in Pakistan, focusing on the availability of childcare services. She holds a master's degree in entrepreneurial leadership from Babson College and an undergraduate degree in economic and finance from SUNY Plattsburgh. Shireen, the floor is yours. Thank you for that introduction, Sanaya. Hi everyone. Established in 2005 by 14 of the country's leading corporates and business groups as an advocacy platform to improve the general business environment of the country, the Pakistan Business Council works closely with relevant government departments, ministries, regulators and institutions, as well as other organizations and professional bodies. The Center of Excellence in Responsible Business was set up by the PBC three years ago to bring about a change in mindset towards long-term sustainable value creation. 
we have since then we have undertaken a focused approach towards working with many businesses including and beyond the membership of the pbc by strengthening and growing the formal sector changing mindsets and when required being guided by the un sdgs serb has pursued its objectives with focus on six key strategic areas for responsible business these are in no particular order gender equality creating livelihoods environmental stewardship transforming business culture inclusive and sustainable systems and ethical practices and governance additionally we have identified that among the 17 sdgs pakistan being one of the first countries to have resolved in parliament to pursue these <clears throat> 10 are 10 amongst them are where the private sector can play a supportive role of the public sector in helping in, the, in its achievement to support this serb has undertaken research over the three years and brought out publication providing baseline surveys and case studies of good practices three years ago we put together the gender diversity baseline survey amongst pbc member companies in rela relation to goal 5 of the un sdg which focuses on achieving gender equality and empowerment of all girls and women in particular target 5.5 ensure women's full and effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision making in political economic and public life the survey provided a snapshot for the representation of women in the workforce company culture the policies that drive the overall culture of the company equal pay equal opportunities recruitment and promotion flexible work options leadership development training and mentoring with the survey we were able to see that 50% of respondent companies have females ranging from 10 to 20% of their workforce a textile company illustrated that more than 40% of its workforce were females and at leadership level there are representation of women as directors in more than 14 companies it is great to see that such a large chunk of companies in pakistan have gender diversity highlighted as one of their top 5 core business goals In line with the baseline survey, Serb has continued to work in enhancement of women in the workplace in collaboration with the IFC. Five case studies on areas such as effective mechanisms against harassment, family-friendly workplace policies, women in non-traditional roles, and retaining top talent have been published after conducting focus group discussions and key information interviews with Pakistani companies leading the way in the gender space. We have during this period pursued these six strategic goals through an engagement cycle. Serb's engagement cycle begins with awareness through mechanisms of webinars and workshops where we establish a baseline of good practices, benchmarking these against the global best, developing case studies of Pakistan businesses that walk the talk, conduct workshops where the practi practitioners demonstrate how they have changed their business models to become more responsible, run these across the country identifying practical issues faced get stakeholders for round table discussions on possible policy changes and then follow this up in a white paper that advocates such change finally we complete the cycle through recognition of businesses that have moved the needle more than others by showcasing at conferences and awards when a cycle is complete for a strategic area we carry out an impact assessment of our engagement over the last 3 to 5 years so what has our impact been till date i shall let the slide speak for itself While all is available on our website, you will also have seen that we have gained traction in our social media usage recently. All that we have engaged in would not have been possible without building key partnerships and alliances. I am pleased to state that when the International Financial Corporation, a member of the World Bank, decided to initiate work on women empowerment in Pakistan, at five pre-identified sectors that are investment ready in Pakistan through a gender lens <clears throat> now the way ahead among others for the purpose of this presentation i have highlighted only two that we believe are relevant for the economic revival of pakistan as well as the participation of women in the workforce these are mapping and development of the supply chain particularly in the agriculture center 
as well as responsible impact investment funding, whereby overseas institutional funds would seek to invest in responsible businesses in Pakistan that pursue ESG factors as part of their business models. We will be looking forward to seek your collaboration and active engagement and support in these projects. Thank you all for patiently engaging with CERB, which I wish to reiterate is PBC's initiative to deepen responsible business practices and grow the ecosystem in which the formal sector. Here is my contact information. You can reach me at shireen at pbc.org.pk or, or on plus 92301-822-3139. Thank you, Shireen, for that fascinating insight. Um, growing up in India till the age of 13, I understand the tough challenges and difficulties that come with being a woman in a developing nation. Women in India and Pakistan and many other nations around the world are often denied basic health care and education, suffering brutal domestic violence and prejudice, and lack access to good work opportunities based slowly on their gender. It is reassuring to see charities like the pa Pakistani Business Council with their family-friendly initiatives to close the gender gap in the workplace and a hung, breaking taboos and educating our girls about sexual health and reproductive health, and the Asha Center and the Leela Punawala Foundation doing transformative work in the field of women empowerment. This brings home a greater appreciation of the work that the UN does in terms of advocating um, gender equality through agreements such as the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. The CSW has been instrumental in promoting women's rights and shaping global standards on gender equality and the empowerment of women. I'd like to end up with a quote by former Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru. To awaken the people, it is the woman who must be awakened. Once she is on the move, the family moves, the village moves, the nation moves. Thank you all so much for listening in today. If you have any questions about any of the work that we do or the charities that we represent, please feel free to contact us. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day.